I'm going to read from a section of Dreams in a Time of War. Uh, it's a story of my growing up in Kenya. It's called Dreams in a Time of War because I was born in 1938. Uh, that would be about seven years after a Danish writer you know very well left Kenya. Her name is Karen Blixen, uh, also known as Isaac Dineson, uh, also known as the author of Out of Africa, and also known as the person who gave her name to the most fashionable district in Kenya today, Nairobi, called, and the most expensive, called Karen District, okay? Uh, but 1938, of course, is the beginning of the Second World War thereabouts, so I was born in that situation. And after the Second World War, of course, I came up with the Mau Mau War of Liberation for us. So I really, I come of age during that period. First, Second World War, and then uh, the War of Our Liberation. And this is how I went to school. Now, I must give a little bit of background, because this may be very strange, or in Denmark, I don't know. But I was born into her household. I was very lucky. I had four mothers, okay, and one father. Do you like this? Like one father, four mothers. <clears throat> and we had a common yard. We played around here. But in the evening, we'd go to any of the mother's houses to hear stories, okay? Uh, but we had a problem because we, the children, wanted to hear the same stories in daytime. And they often told us, you cannot, stories in daytime disappear, okay? They only come back in the evening after everybody had done their work and they are now resting with in the evening, and then the stories come back. But really, we wanted to hear the stories in the in daytime. So the section which I'm going to read is how I discovered the secret of stories in daytime. It was a magical moment for me. And I, by the, the person who made this possible for me, actually, was my mother. My mother, who was one of those four mothers, but she was a third. Okay, first, second, third, fourth. My mother was here, this one, my mother, okay? You get the picture, okay? Uh, she could not read or write, okay? <clears throat> but she's the one who sent me to school, okay? And on the day I first go to school, she buys me a, a slate. Do you know what a slate is, by the way? It's a kind of, you know, tablet. The original tablet, okay? <laughs> right? Yeah. So you know what the original tablet and we use a piece of chalk to write on this, yeah? okay? So I go to school. <clears throat> so I want to share with you now the secret of stories in daytime, okay? That's how I discovered that magic myself. So I go to school. I have brought a black slate and a white chalk for my writing material. We copy on our slates what the teacher has written on the blackboard. Later, she comes around to grade on the slate, putting an X or a check against each word or number, totals them up, and then circles the cumulative number. At first, I do not realize that after she has graded, I still have to wait for her to enter the number in a register for the record. So me, I rub off my work as soon as the teacher has graded it. But when I go home and my mother asks me what and how I had done, and I say I rubbed off everything, she says, no, then don't wait for the teacher to tell you what to do. The teacher also corrects me. Otherwise, I would continue getting zero. And when later she starts writing on my slate, 
10 out of 10. And my mother asks me what I had done, and I say 10 out of 10. She would be a little bit suspicious. She would ask probing questions, ending with, is that the best you could have done? This is a question she'll keep on asking in response to my schoolwork, class exercises and tests. Is that the best you could have done? Even when later I tell proudly that I called and 100%, my 100%, she has the same question in different ways until I say yes, I had tried my best. Strange. She seems more interested in the process of getting there than the actual results. So I drift through the initial classes, not un quite understanding why I have been moved from sub B to sub A to grade one, all within the same quarter, a skipping of classes that continues from term to term, so that within a year I was in grade two. And still my mother continues to ask, is that the best you could have done? I don't know about the best that I could have done. All I know is that one day I'm able to read on my own the recoil primer we used in class titled Mudomere wa reader. Some sentences are simple like the one captioning a drawing of a man, an axe on the ground, his face grimacing with pain as he holds his left knee in both hands, drops of blood trickling down. The picture actually is more interesting than the words, which are, Kamau ete mete kuru, ete mete neidanoa. Kamau has cut himself. He has cut his leg. He has cut himself with an axe. I tackle long passages that do not have illustrations. There's a passage that I read over and over again. And suddenly, one day, I start hearing music in the words which are, God has given the recoil a beautiful country abundant in water, food, and luscious bush. The Agikoyo should praise the Lord all the time for he has ever been generous to them. Even when not reading it, I can hear the music, the choice and arrangements of the words, the crescendo, the cadence. I, I can't pick in one thing that makes so beautiful and long lived my memory. I realize that even written words can carry the music I loved in stories, particularly the choric melody. And yet, this is not a story. It is a descriptive statement. It doesn't carry an illustration. But it is a picture in itself. And yet, more than a picture and a description, it is music, written words, can also sing. So I started reading books, and this, <clears throat> how I came to get the magic of storytelling daytime. Uh, daytime now is always welcome. It allows the book of magic to tell me stories without interruptions, except when I have to do this or that chore this ability to escape into a world of magic is worth my having gone to school. Thank you, mother. Thank you. The school has opened my eyes. And when later in church, I hear the words, I was blind. And now I see from the um, song, Him Amazing Grace, I remember the school and the day I learned to read. Thank you. Thank you.